We're back with another episode. We're back with another episode of Barrett Says. Yes. Oh my gosh. We are back. This week went by so quick to me. Like, it went by super, super quick. <sighs> I'm excited because who, who's completely over 2020? Raise your hand. Me. This week, I didn't do much. This weekend was my mother's birthday, so we did a dinner and stuff. I'm trying to think, did I do anything else special? No. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I say, no, I don't think so. You know, it's just been a chill week. Went by super quick for whatever reason. I am here for it. Um, what, what have I gotten into today? Actually, I was watching a podcast. You guys probably know or don't know. The No Chases podcast with Tim Shantaratsu, Ricky Shucks, and Nikki Blaze. And um, what happened towards the end of the episode, it was last week because this, this episode is coming out Monday. Last week's episode was basically Ricky, Ricky Shucks and Nikki Blaze had a little debate because... He was just, they were talking about basically men paying on the date. Or the, not I, on any date. I don't know if they were saying first date, but it was just any date. Or whatever the case may be. And you know, obviously Nikki Blade, she was just like, I'm, <laughs> when I go on a date, I'm not paying <laughs> on the date. Period. If, I, if I'm paying, then I feel like me was just friends. And Ricky Chuck felt like that was stupid. Or whatever the case may be. So... It was just a hot topic. Like Ricky Shucks, Ricky Shucks had good points. Nikki Blades had good points. Um, Ricky Shucks was just saying that's dumb because, like, if you go out on a date with somebody and you go out on a date with a guy and you connect with him, but he didn't pay for the first date, but you thought he was mad cool, he was a vibe, but he didn't pay. He made y'all do fifty fifty. You dead going to end it with him. And for me personally. I have never paid on a date 50 50 none of that thank god I think that with younger people like when people go on dates at 14 15 16 maybe they might split a date because you know they're young they don't have money like that I'm not sure I'm just I'm just saying okay maybe even 18 19 20 I I'm just thinking in my head like, at that age, a lot of people don't have a job. I don't know. But that's to me, is some young shit. Or it's just, you know. And I know people who that incident has happened to, and they're not with that guy. Um, and what Ricky Shucks was saying was like, but that's dumb because, like, what, why does it matter who pays for the date? Who's paying on the date? Da, 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 da. And then they were saying that if, if I'm the one who asks you out, then I'm going to pay for the date. Even that, like, even for me, like, if I'm like, yo, let's go out. I'm, I'm off the market, thank God, because this is obviously a lot of problematics going on. But um, if I'm, like, hit up a guy I'm talking to and I'm like, oh, we should go out, I still don't expect to pay for the date. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, I don't. But I heard that's the thing, or whatever the case may be. So basically, for me, I get the ideology that is stupid to like basically not want to date a guy any longer because he didn't pay for the date. DK. But I feel like due to societal norms, right? We've been raised from the millennials down. I don't know if Gen Z, how the parents are raising them. I can't speak on that. But I know from millennials and down, meaning the people under us, we've always been taught the notion that a man is supposed to pay for the first date. Or, or I mean, and other dates, not all dates he has to pay. I mean, we could split, like, you've been dating for mad long. Maybe, you know, you could show him, like, oh, I'm a boss too, or whatever. So let's just say for the first date, whatever. We've been taught that on the first date, the guy is supposed to pay. Like, that's what we've been taught. Um, so, I feel like a dude who, don't, who doesn't want to pay on the first date, like, he wasn't raised properly. And I'm not, I'm not even trying to be funny or maybe he, like, might have beef with his moms or something or, or even his pops. 
because y'all get what I'm saying? Like, I don't have a problem with the idea of 50 50, right? I get what Ricky Shucks is saying. Like, that's dumb. That's dumb to not want to be with somebody who you connected with, clicked with, had mad fun with, but he didn't pay for the date, so now it's dumb. In reality, it's dumb, but for me, because we were all taught that, for him to say, I'm not doing that speaks volumes because it's a societal norm that we're raised on and it's a thing that we're taught. So I don't feel like that guy is trying to go against the grain. Some people might view it as that. I feel like he's being bummy like I, I I really do I'm gonna keep it a buck like it from Millennials down now is it dumb yeah you could say that but if that's something that we no longer want to do then we would have to raise our sons and daughters like that if that's something that has to end sorry it's not ending with Millennials because we already was taught that but if if that's something that we want to do is start doing 50 50 dates or whatever the case may be Y'all gotta raise your son and daughters on that. Like, yeah, in reality, is it stupid? Sort of. Because if I click with you, I'm gonna really end you over not paying on the first date. I mean, those are things we're taught. And I understand we're supposed to break generational Christ, uh, curses. But if we're already kind of in it, the way you break a curse is for your, the generation to come. You get what I'm saying? And from... My understanding and most experiences, when the guy doesn't want to pay on the first date, it really is a representation of where he is financially, how he's going to behave financially. He might not even be broke, but he's going to be cheap. And yeah, it's good to be cheap. I'm cheap. But to what extent? You get what I'm saying? Like, it, in some ways, it, usually for the most part, like... I would probably say maybe 8 out of 10 times, a guy who is not willing to pay on the first date, it speaks volumes about how he behaves going forth, unfortunately. And I think that's also due to societal norms. And even for, like, I'm wondering, like, does Ricky Shucks pay on the first date? Like, is he the type that's not willing to do that or whatever the case may be? Because he was going hard. I wonder if he was just saying that, but he doesn't do. But he still... Um, pays like I wonder because like for me like I said I get why he thinks it's dumb but I still have expectations that if I was single because I'm not single um and I was to go on a date with a guy I would expect him to pay on the first date like you know what I'm saying like I hope that he's not living foul I mean he has a girlfriend he's dating um the girl on Instagram Twitter Bay you know she's with him so we, we don't know we don't know. Um, but it was an interesting conversation. Nikki Blaze was getting a little tongue-tied. I don't feel like she was getting tongue-tied. I feel like she was saying what it was. Like, that's what it is. Like, that's it. And unfortunately, there's no real realm of reason behind it. But like I said, you know, if, if your moms, I feel like a man who don't listen to his moms is somebody I don't want to be with. Period. Your mother told you, hopefully, because honestly, now it's going to get too far. You know, this is the introductory talk. But, you know, do mothers, and a lot of times, you know what they say, you know, mothers um, love their sons and raise their daughters. So, a lot of times, you know, especially now, like our generation, the mothers didn't even tell their son how to be chivalrous. They didn't tell them, like, oh, pay for a girl's date open the door for a woman you know they don't even teach teach they didn't they what the what the fuck is that generation before us they just they just was feeding for their sons like and, and your son is a hot ass fucking mess and we gotta deal with him we talk about this in the podcast all the time okay all right so we don't even know what the fuck they mothers done did their mother probably even never taught them to pay on the first day so we don't even know no one knows but <laughs> You know, let me know how you feel. I don't know. But it was interesting. You definitely, you guys can go check it out. I don't care to give a plug. Because they got more um, followers, subscribers than me. So it's not even giving a plug or whatever. They, they don't need me. 
Um, so yeah, you guys can definitely go check it out. It's called No Chasers, Tim Shankaransu, Ricky Shucks, Nikki Blades. And it was the last week's episode, like the most recent one. I don't know if they're gonna put out an episode. I don't know when you watch this, but yeah. It was that episode. <laughs> and yeah, they talked about it. Uh, go check out um, Tim Shantaranto's IG page because I think he brought it up on there. But last week we spoke about different types of men and the pros and cons because I said and how to deal with them, but I wasn't really saying that too much. So, you know, I can't be, uh, I forgot. I had the word in my head. But basically, you know, I want to talk about the, the, the female. We're not perfect, you know. And we have many personalities. I only came up with seven, surprisingly, and nine for men. But I know there, is, there were some that we are leaving out. And you know what? The podcast would be eight hours. And that is a, a day shift. And you wouldn't even listen to the whole thing. So... Yeah, so today we're going to talk about that and yes, let's get into it. So, there is no, um, what you would call it. Oh, and if you, you know, you just ran into this video, whatever the case may be, definitely go check out the different types of men and the pros and cons or how to deal with them or whatever. So, yeah, there is no expand your mind because we're just going to jump into it. So, the first girl i put was the gold digger slash city girl because you know city girl is more of a 2020 2019 term for basically you know a gold digger but is it because i feel like let me get my water you know it's got a new water bottle is that oh no that's called the sugar baby because i was like it's a gold digger a girl who likes to date older men with money i feel like back then that's how it was portrayed because most it felt like most men who had money were older or whatever. But yeah, go to the city girl, same thing. Basically, you know, city girl, she's bought her bag. <laughs> Just speaking of, <laughs> motherfuckers not paying on the first date. A city girl, she's not, she... Bitch, if you told her you're not paying for the meal literally while you're sitting, she, she wouldn't even entertain a man like that. I don't think, I think they could feel an energy, a city girl. Where if, if she wouldn't even find a guy who behaves that way. They only take bullets and shot callers. Okay. Okay. Like. That Ricky Shuck shit. She's not dealing with him. She wouldn't even entertain him. She would just be like wow. <laughs> Whoa. Like things like that scare city girls. Um. Yeah. They take bullets, shot callers, drug dealers, all that. <laughs> That's what they do. Like. You better come to the bag. Um, city girls, they are very... And, and they're, they're rude. They're out of pocket. Um, they say stuff like, you know, I, he ate my box and I left. You know, they do things like that. They're, they're out of pocket. They're disrespectful. Um, are, we don't know. Feminist society. Is that disrespectful? To get your, your box eaten and then leave? I don't know. That's the type of energy they're on. They're getting Birkin bags, Fendi shoes, period, across the fucking board. Um, and I think, can you date a girl, you know, that's very materialistic and, you know, obsessed with dating a guy that's all about money? Like, I think one of the top concerns that people get with dating a gold digger, I mean, is does she love me? I think you can be a gold digger or city girl and still seek love. It's just that one of your preferences or traits is that he has to have money. Um, he has to have money. He has to be one of the sports. That could be a trait. Um, I feel like sometimes, you know, that the city girl gets a lot of flat. But I feel like it's nothing wrong with wanting a guy who has money. I feel like having, I feel like this money thing comes with a negative connotation. Like, oh, money is everything. Money isn't everything. I mean, but it's helpful. Yeah, feel me. Um, it comes with a negative connotation. So people think that automatically when somebody only cares about money, then they don't really love the person, which is not true. Because number one, you can love, fall in love 
with someone with money like there's plenty of I'm, I'm i'm assuming you know you know guys that's mad rich and sweethearts and hopefully faithful and things like that um and i don't think there's nothing wrong with that being a a, a requirement like my dude has to be a baller like for real like but you know city girls get a lot of flack um Can you date one? Yeah, is she, I mean, it's nothing, I, what I'm saying in hindsight, is really nothing wrong with wanting a guy that wants money. But sometimes that's all they're looking for is money. They're not looking for love. That's technically the gold digger city girl mantra. Like, you know, city girl say that in the song sometimes. Like, I ain't looking for love, you know, I'm looking for the bag, blah, 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 blah. Fuck niggas get money type shit. So, I mean, that's a downfall. I mean, you gonna have to, if you, if you fall in love with a city girl, you gonna have to work hard to get her to fall right back in love with your ass. So, what can we do? The second girl, the stay in the crib ambition list. Okay. First of all, nothing wrong with staying in the crib all the time, but you gotta have ambition. So, if you're staying in the crib, you gotta be doing something. But I heard there's a market of girls who like which is so fascinating to me who really like don't like to go out like i thought that was a dude thing like because sometimes guys they would be like i don't want to go nowhere i don't want to go out to eat. Uh, like being mad annoying but there's girls like that that be like yo let's just watch tv like that's what the chinese like chinese sound good but i cook dinner <laughs> I eat Chinese food in Mad Long, not because I'm racist, because of Corona. I didn't eat Chinese food because I think they racist. When they did that shit with the um the black people, I said, you know what? I'm not fucking with them for a minute, for the rest of the year. So I haven't ate Chinese Chinese food in Mad Long. I ate some steamed dumplings though, so maybe I cheated. But anyway, back to the topic. Um, they just like to stay in the crib, like they're not really ambition driven, and I think it's interesting. That that's um there's a market for that because I think we I think we view women I think now in this generation like 2020 and maybe like up until like I don't know the 2000s women are so that we work you know back then you know stay at home mom or wife was the thing but I feel like it's so I don't know how rare it is but I remember I had um. John Bills on one of my uh, episodes, the first episode of season two, and um, he brought that out. Like it's dead girls like that, you know that you you gotta push them to like even do different things to even be driven to like you just gotta like push them. And I'm just like, it's a market for that, but I I, I could imagine. I think. Some guys might like that. A girl, do they? It might be a market for that. You know, a guy who likes a girl who likes to stay in the crib. I don't know. Maybe, cause some guys like to stay in the crib. Get a, get a stay in the crib bitch. Gotta get a stay in the crib nigga. Period. I think that's that. That's the only way that could work. Honestly, cause you can't. <laughs> One person likes to go out, the other one don't. That's just a, a recipe for a, a disaster or whatever the case may be. Um, for me, ambition is like somebody who's just like, I don't believe in that with men. and I, So I won't agree with it with women. Definitely. Definitely as a female, I'm definitely not going to advocate that lifestyle. It's a dub for that. A whole big entire dub. Um, but you know, she stays in the crib. She does her thing. She's never left her borough. If she's from Brooklyn, she's been only in Brooklyn. If she's from the Bronx, she's only been in the Bronx. And that's that on that. She knows all the spots in the Bronx. She knows all the spots in Brooklyn, wherever she lives. And that's just that on that, you know. What can we do? I'm just like, is there guys out here really dating girls like that? There's no market for that. That's so fascinating to me. I feel like that's such a guy thing, but I could, I could respect it if it's a girl that's like that, but not ambitionless. Cause you could stay in the house and be ambition, full of ambition. Just like doing your thing, working on you, working on your business. But if you really like, it's, it's 
girls like that too that really they like to stay in the house they like to be hood and just give a fuck about niggas I hate that all I care about is niggas girl like ugh I should have put that down like that's that's all they know are men they don't know nothing they don't know politics they don't know what the fuck going on like bitch you don't even know celebrity gossip celebrity gossip is not relevant but you don't even know that all you know is men they could talk about sex, dick, penis, niggas all freaking day. Those are the type of bitches that stay home all fucking day. Some of them be out. Because you could be a working hoe. And still all you focus on is men. And that's a troubled world to live in. Is if your main focus in life is men. And that's why I don't like some of these um two th these new these black shows coming out. Like I was talking about with Sister Sister. How they was just so boy crazy. And so was Moesha. Like... That's why, I, that, that was one of my pet peeves of 90s, uh, early 2000s television. Because that's a scary, scary, scary lifestyle to have. Boom. Next girl is the Mixie girl. So, we got Mixie guys, Mixie girls. A Mixie girl, to me, is a recipe for disaster. Mixy girls, because I feel like men, they got all this testosterone. They so spewed up with, you know, they're just so spewed up with jealousy sometimes that a mixy girl would be a lot. Because I feel like, and, and you know, women, we do have a lot of emotions. We get caught up in our feelings. And I feel like when you mixy and you know mad girls and mad guys. Especially if you know like mad guys. I feel like you might smash a few of them when you mixy. I don't care. You're mad that I'm starting rumors about mixy people. I don't care. Um, She's always in the line like don't let her be mixy and look the fuck good either bitch. And be fly. Like that's a, that's a, that's a recipe for disaster. I don't feel like a man could handle a mixy girl, like for real. Like I feel like women, we barely can handle a mixy guy, but a female, bitch. They say they like a girl, a girl who likes to party constantly, go out, has mad friends, knows all the tea, knows all the deets. And she not a celebrity, because celebrities that's their job, you know, to go to parties and. I'm talking about a girl who, this is not her job to have friends. It's not her job to go to parties. She's just fucking mixy. She knows everything. That's a lot. That's a lot for a man. I feel like, I don't know. I'm not a guy, but I feel like most guys can't handle that. And I feel like a lot of times too, most of the time, we kind of want somebody like, see, there was the stay, at, stay in the crib girl, then the mixy girl. We kind of want to balance like. Even if you dating a guy, like, I feel like if a guy's dating a girl, he doesn't want a girl that's always constantly going out, partying, clubbing, wilding, having mad fun. Like, I don't, I don't feel like they do. Like, cause it's like, like, do you not find fulfillment in me? Are you not having fun at home? Like, what, what are you escaping from by being constantly in the mix and especially if you mixy and bitch you're not even a celebrity like i hate a mixy hood celebrity bitch and i mean hood celebrity like bitch you're only popular on your block you're not even popular in the whole fucking borough if you was popular in the whole borough of brooklyn you would obviously eventually become a celebrity like you know pop smoke was popping then he got popping in brooklyn and then eventually somebody wanted to sign him i'm talking about mixy bitches where you only kind of do it was a moment for that. It probably still is a moment where it was like girls that were like in your hood. I think it's still a, 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 a area for that. They live in your hood, but they pop and they got mad followers for some weird reason. And, and and usually sometimes they get popping depending on what they do with that following, like Cardi B, you know. There's a but there's a market. It's definitely a market. Star Broom was a big big one of them. Like, she was just popular in her hood, and then now she called to be friend. Well, you know, whatever. She probably was always called to be friend. And boom. So, it's, it's a big market for that. Like, just bitches that's just mixy on a block or in a area, in a section or whatever the case may be. There's a big freaking market for that. And, um, 
don't know. For me, it depends. But I do think it's corny like the hood celebrity bitches. Unless you're going to do something with your final one. If you're going to only stay popping on your blog, I think that's corny. OD. And I don't think nobody ever really wants that type of drama. Are they dateable? Sure. But I think eventually a guy will date you while you're mixy. But his host is to get you out of the mix. And get you focused on him. And building a family and a career and whatever the case may be. The mixy life, the mixy life is not forever. What you going to do? I ain't no friend. I'm Jamaican. I know West Indian people... They be in the clubs being party promoters today like 80, bitch. I remember I be seeing flyers with um, Grandma CC Party Thursday. Like, period. So, I mean, it's a market for being mixy and old as fuck. And that's up to you. That's on you. <laughs> the next bitch. Okay, let's not call females bitches. Even though we're playing around. We're not going to do that. The next girl is the clingy girl. And, you know, I talked about... The clingy guy last week. And you know, clingy girl, when we get clingy, we get clingy. Our clingy is like, round, round, round. Like, we just touching your face, touching your body, touching you all over. We need to be there. We need to call your phone. Your phone. Hello. Good morning. How are you? Where are you? What are you doing? And yes, it can be possessive. I do feel like. Clingy girls are naturally possessive. Like, a, a clingy guy maybe could be unpossessive, but a girl, I don't even think we could use the word clingy for her. If she's clingy, she's possessive. You know, she's probably had some troubles in her past relationship, and she feels like she needs to be on top of you. She needs to know where you're at, where you're doing, and where you are going. She is clingy. She is possessive. Women, we are... We do have a tendency to be a little bit crazy. I feel like a clingy girl, child, that gotta be your cup of tea. Because some dudes love a girl. They love the drama. They love that. They love when they're out and their girl calls them and they're like, yo, where, like, babe, where are you? Like, what is going on? They love that. Some girls love that too. Toxic. If you're into the rah rah shit, a clingy girl's for you. If you like attention, if you like to feel wanted, it's a big market for that. I feel like the clingy girl is, is right up your alley. She's she's ready. She's willing. Um, like I said, clingy people scare the crap out of me. Period. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I feel like it's just too much. Like, ram. Like, ooh. And when they're clingy, they feel like they want to be around you for everything. So if you a guy who like when you with your guys, you want to be with just your guys, then hey, clean girls definitely not for you. If you're like a guy and you feel like I like alone time sometimes. Um, if you're a guy and you like to feel wanted i mean i feel like it's a degree though like i feel like sometimes you could like to feel wanted sometimes i like to feel wanted but i don't want no clingy guy you know what i'm saying like my husband is definitely not super duper like clingy at all but i like that like i don't know but sometimes you're like i want you my attention like i want you to touch me i want you to be all on me like but how often would I want that? Like, it's a degree. Like, clingy, that's the type of person that's, like, constantly overdoing it. So, it's the clingy girl dateable. I think, honestly, it's, they're toxic. Straight there and straight to the point. That's just my opinion. The IG model. Okay, so, first of all, let's get into it. Okay, the IG, IG models, some of those IG models are celebrities, but I heard, you know, in a celebrity, in a celebrity tea, let's get T-E on the podcast, bitch. They be fucking down other rappers, like, a lot of these IG models be getting tossed around, flipped and sourced and dosed, like, a lot of these celebrities done smash these same IG models, and I feel like, that's how it is too, like, if you want to say the girl, 
some of them, because, you know, I love you, like, some of them, if you want to date a girl and she's mixy and she's about that life, that IG life, because there's a certain type of, there's influencers and then there's IG models. And IG models, they basically just, you know, they get clothes from Fashion Nova, promote their code, and that's it. They just getting free clothes and free weave, and that's it. They're not an influence. They technically are influencer because they're they look pretty, they're gorgeous, and because we see that, we want to buy their bundles. We want to buy the clothes that they're buying. We might be inspired by outfit. I like looking at IG models page for poses and stuff, even though I don't put that much pictures on my IG page. But yeah, when I was trying to get into that market, I was like, okay, I like that pose. Mm -hmm, I'm gonna do that when I get my little picture going. Like, I used to be like that. Whatever. They, so it's a difference between the influencer and the IG model. So let's, let's make sure that that's there. Or whatever the case may be. IG models, to my knowledge, get tossed around. And listen, listen, listen. Honey. I don't tell nobody how to live when it comes to sex and relationships or none of that. If you want to go out and have sex with several men as long as you're protecting yourself so you don't get STDs and STIs and um that's really it I mean or you're not out getting pregnant constantly and having to have mad abortions by all means do you sis do you beloved cause who, who are you hurting if you're you're having protective sex and or you're using birth control and having protective sex like is technically you're not harming anyone but the thing is is like when you smash and dudes in the same circle i would think it would have a little bit of impact on you the female as a person um we shouldn't care what people think about us obviously but would you want to do that? Would you feel comfortable? Like, sometimes we got to sit back and think. Like, would I feel comfortable smashing a guy that, sm that my friend smashed? Right? So, or would I feel comfortable saying a guy that not only one of my friends smashed, but three of them? That's a bit much. Like, I don't want to, for me, I can only speak for me. I don't want to smash no guy. Because I know it's a market for that, probably. It's, pro it's a market for everything. It's 2020, bitch. Okay? Okay. Um, me, personally, I'm not going to feel comfortable smashing a guy that smashed three of my friends. First of all, my friends, that's mad. Even when you say that out, because now when I just said that, I'm like, first of all, why would there be a guy that smashed three of my friends? Like, I feel like the only way that would be possible is if, like, Oddly, the universe just brought all him to them in different states or something or different ways. Like, that makes zero sense. Like, if you don't find it appropriate for you, how do you think that guy would feel? Like, that's my only thing with IG, mo IG models. They're tossing around. Y'all might not want to hear that derogatory term, but it's a fact. It's a big fact, the mundo. Okay? Um, IG models... You know, they're about their pictures, they're about their look, they're about their status. So, bitch, you might see them going to the corner store on with a full face of makeup. You got to ready, be ready. You have to be ready to be in the limelight. Because then once they get a couple, they might want to start a couple's channel. They might want to put you on the gram. You might start getting DMs. Um, <sighs> shit might start getting scary. You know what I'm saying? Like, because the thing with IG models, what I must say, is like, once they put who they dating on the gram... The tea starts flowing. So you have to be open to the idea of your business might hit the streets. Shit your mother didn't even know about you might hit the streets, bitch. Okay, because once you, once they find out you, oh, you ain't, uh huh? Like, they want to know who you are, what you do, how y'all found each other. Like, your, your tea is going to be spilled all over the floor. All over the floor. All over the floor. Um, if you, I mean, if you a rapper, how you say, do rappers watch Brit says? <laughs> You obviously don't care about that because, you know, your business is always getting spilled out. You can't hide shit, but I feel like IG models, too, they have a bad stigma of, you know, personality lists. All they do is scroll on their phone all day, which is, 
some 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 girls and guys are not IG models and they scroll on their phone all day. They're just constantly on Instagram, constantly on social media, constantly looking at Twitter. Con like who's fucking with me? Reading comments. They're just obsessed with social media. Like. IG models to my understanding like they're just obsessed with it and that has to be something that you're into you know maybe IG models should they influencers and I don't know they often like stray to regular guys though which makes sense I think sometimes IG models they're so beautiful that men are intimidated by them and sometimes when they see them with all those followers they're like oh do I want to deal with that nah, maybe not so, I mean, they're dateable. They're very dateable. I don't think an IG model is not dateable, but you just got to know that her business might come on the floor too because they get caught up in stuff. So, you might, like me, somebody who's not um, important, I could, you know, date somebody and they won't know my sexual past or they won't know all my dirty laundry. You could literally... Sometimes IG models, they get so popular, you could Google their name and find out mad stuff about them. And sometimes, you know, some things might be sacred and some things you wish you never knew about your partner, right? So, that's one of the downfalls that come with dating an IG model, bitch. But shout out to the IG models. <laughs> Next, oh God. We had the super emotional guy. What's life without a super emotional girl? Some would say that all girls are super emotional, but we're not. It's a very different spectrum. Some girls are really not that emotional. Um, girls, I mean, I know, you know, I've seen girls that are really extremely emotional. Like, oh my God. Ugh. I, I personally think it's exhausting. I don't know how a guy would handle a super emotional girl, but I think that super emotional girls are very dateable. You know why? Because I think that men view all of us that way. Like, they already naturally think that we all cry all the time. So once they get with, like, a girl that's like that, they're like, oh, my gosh, she's such a girly girl. Y'all think that? Like, I feel like it's not, like, a, a trait that's downplaying to a man. Like, they, when they get a super emotional girl, it seems okay because that's the norm see how like with the guy last week we were talking about like we're not accustomed to a man being so emotional due to you know society but with women it's something that everyone believes that we are where they believe we're super duper emotional and also it impacts us that's why a lot of times you know they don't want a female president because they feel like we're going to put our emotions in it. Or we can't be CEOs because we're going to put our emotions in it. And it's nothing wrong with putting emotions into stuff sometimes. I feel like when you put your emotions into stuff, some of the best comes with some of the best outcomes. Um, I, I, I think, and it sucks, due to society, it's nothing wrong with dating a super emotional girl. Because technically, we that girl might be super emotional because she believes it's okay to be that emotional. You get what I'm saying? Like, that's what the world and the media is telling us. Like, oh, when we get our period, we're super emotional. Wah! Or we're, we have so much uh, estrogen in our hormones and it makes us so emotional. So, I mean, uh, I feel like it could get toxic though. Like... Like, how many times are you going to cry? Like, when are you going to just turn the fuck up? Not everything is a need to shed a tear. Stop cursing his ass the fuck out clean. Uh, why would you say that to me? No. Why would you say that? Why would you say that? No, that's toxic. I should have put that bitch up there. The angry girl. No, why would you say that? You're, you're comparing me to your mother. I don't act like your mother. <laughs> I don't do stuff like that, but you know, a man loves his mother. Hello, good morning. <laughs> but I mean, I feel emotional can get toxic. Like I said, though, like too much crying and all that, like everything you you getting sad about, like that's also um sensitive. Being sensitive to stuff that that could be you might need to work some stuff through therapy. Like sometimes girls are very sensitive. Men are too, but I think we show it 
sometimes like we'll a guy will say something to us and we'll think about something that happened in the past and it will be like overly emotional or whatever the case may be. So I feel like it can get toxic if that is a female who's super emotional because she hasn't worked through things that she has dealt with in her past relationships or in her life. Yes, I think being su super emotional could be a bit much. Is she dateable? Yes. Is is Can it work? Sure. With a guy with a lot of patience. And there are men out there with a lot of patience. Oh. <sighs> Last. But definitely. Not least. Ah. Uh, the Ratchet Girl. Duh. A uh, duh. Like, Ratchet Girls are just the pinnacle of society. Um. They really, you know. I'm a little Ratchet too. I feel like. I feel like everybody is a little bit ratchet. Like for real, I do. I really feel like we're all just, just like a pinch, a little ratchet. Like I feel like even like the bougiest of girls do things that's ratchet. Like they'll say that like I really like eating something. You know, like bitch, that's weird. Like you're ratchet. <laughs> like. I don't know, but the ratchet girl is ratchet. She's hood as fuck, ghetto as fuck. She will be anybody ass, but not cheat on her, cause then she gonna fuck you up. Then she gonna fuck up the nice little girl that you cheat on, her, cheating on her, but on the side. Cause you know, dudes when they date like a hood girl, they always like sometimes they side chick always be like prissy, prissy, and then now she gonna get beat up by the ratchet girl child. It's gonna be too much. The ratchet girl is willing to go to jail. She don't give a fuck. She's she's on. A ten. She's ready to roll. She's ready. She's ready at all times. You feel me? Um, she's very outspoken. Y'all can go to a restaurant and she's gonna turn the fuck up. And, uh, most women will turn up at a restaurant, but she's turning up on a level where it's just like, did you ask for that? So why the fuck the bitch didn't get it? Why is everybody looking in your face? Like, uh, 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 uh. like she's constantly just on a thousand. She's a lot. I feel like we all could be a lot sometimes too. Because I feel like sometimes I'm a lot. I'm ratchet though. So it is what it is. Honestly. <laughs> um, the ratchet girl is very dateable. I feel like um, <laughs> I'm ratchet. Um, I feel like the ratchet girl is very dateable. I feel like the ratchet girl is OD dateable. Um, <laughs> I don't know why it's that funny. She's just got to find the right guy for her. It can what we not going to have, though, I, I, I don't agree with two ratchet people dating. That I don't. Ugh, the, the thought of that. Heesh. That's too much. Like, I hate a ratchet couple. Like, when y'all ratchet together, it's just a lot of loudness, a lot of ghetto outfits, a lot of color, a lot of screaming. Ooh. But they love each other, though. Ratchet couples, they itch. A ratchet couple, you better stop. You better stop. It's probably a thing or two we could learn from them. You better stop. I think a ratchet person should date like a medium, like a ratchet girl should date like a medium guy, like a guy who's very, like he, he, he's in the middle. Like he could turn up a little bit, but he's mostly chill. Like. You know what I'm saying? And I think that guys like that sometimes enjoy a ratchet girl because they, they're not outspoken themselves and they're not like that. And so they kind of desire and love that that passion that a ratchet girl has and just how she just carries herself. Sometimes people look at like those like ratchet hood people as very confident and just true to themselves and they don't give a fuck. Like... And it is something to be said about somebody like that for real. Like when you you know like the world, especially like if you're black, like you know the world's looking at you like, oh she's ghetto black girl, and you just like I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Period. Like it speaks volumes, and I, I think ratchet people don't get enough credit. You know, they don't. I think a lot of times they just say like, oh she's useless, she's ratchet, but you know she's thriving. And ratchet people, you know. Have come far due to like Cardi B, Tiffany Haddish. I feel like being ratchet is just the the way. Not like that. It it, it shows. I think ratchet has a combination of real, but you can be real and not be ratchet. Let's be honest and let's keep it a hundred. 
Um, but you gotta give Ratchet where it's due, you know? Give credit where it's due, so. A Ratchet girl's dateable, but, but, and also, a Ratchet girl needs a guy who can calm her down sometimes. Like, be like, babe, cause some Ratchet people that, that don't have no guidance, they don't know when to stop. They need somebody that can help them calm down, mellow out sometimes. I think that is so important, like, babe, yo, shut out for me. Be like, only for you, babe. Only for you. I swear to God, I'm going to chill for you. They need that. So I feel like they need somebody, too, that could check them. Not even check them. Just could just be like, yo, for me, at minimum. And they'll be like, I right, fine. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I think that's one of the um, things, you know. That a ratchet girl has. I'm trying to read what this question says. Are any of these types fixable or dateable? Well, I already told you that the, which ones are dateable. Fixable. Uh, I feel like one of them are one of them are unfixable. Like I feel like a a will a, a gold digger always be a gold digger? Mm, I don't know. Like, do they settle down? I feel like if she get her rich man that she loves, yeah, they can settle down. Then again. I feel like, can you fix a, a girl who's ambitionless? But do you want to? Some shit is like, I'm not going to keep telling you to go get a job or something like that. Like, bitch. The the state, the, the ambitionless one is not fixable. That's not your fucking job. Go, go tell her to go fucking talk to a therapist or her mother or something. Or a fucking job recruiter. Like, stop. The mixy girl. I think very fixable. I think so. I think sometimes um, when you're mixy, you're trying to hide from something or you're trying to be somebody you're not. You want to feel like a celebrity. And a guy, the right one, or whomever you date can really like mellow you out. Clean. They need therapy. Bitch, you must go down the line. IG model, you can't stop her bag. So that's not fixable. If you don't like that she... If you find somebody on fucking social media, you can't expect them to just come off of social media for you. So stop. If, if you IG model, you get into that, that guy is toxic. Super emotional. You can't tell somebody to not be emotional. And Ratchet, like, just, just let her be. So yeah, that, that was different types of women and how to deal with them. So I'm happy I lightened up the mood for the past two weeks. Next week, the topic is gonna be dope. It's not heavy, but it's gonna be a good topic. I think it's something that needs to be discussed. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. I'm coming to you every week for the rest of the year, the rest of 2020, because bitch, we need it, right? Oh my God, the election is coming soon. So much stuff is about to pop off real soon. The holidays. I got a holiday episode coming. I'm surprised I never did a holiday episode. So I'm excited. And I will see you guys next.